Hello everyone, welcome to the depth of ML. In last video we have defined the notion of a random variable. In this video we will see the concept of a PMF of random variable and we will see the notion of independence of random variable. Uh, so we have seen the concept of uh, independence of the events and now we will see what it means to say that two random variables are independent with each other. So let us start the video. We have defined a probability mass function which is taking uh, input or a domain of that function is a pro uh, support of that uh, random variable to certain uh, real value 0 to 1. And I want to emphasize that uh, um, whenever the support will be referred, uh, it will be, um, um, uh, we will write something like S of X, which will denote uh, we are referring the support of random variable X. And this support has a nice property that uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this uh, probability mass function has a nice property that for every possible value in this support S of X, um, you know, the probability mass function should sum to one. Um, so please see uh, the PMF also as a, in terms of mathematical notation. We have already seen that a random variable uh, taking certain real value is also a event. You can also write it as a set of all occurrences Y where uh, x is mapping y to small x. Uh, just wants to see that the PMF, uh, just want you to see that the PMF could be visualized as a you know graph structure uh, where uh, uh, probability of uh, C, there are every sample space has been di uh, divided into, uh, the sample space has been partitioned into certain subsets uh, which are mutually exclusive and exhaustive and uh, each subset is mapping to certain real value and this is a visual way of seeing the pmf uh, and you can also see that uh, as a certain bar graph uh, for each value certain uh, probability value is bit, uh, being realized and uh, you can also see it as a graph so uh, we have discussed the function of random variable so function of random variable is could be seen as let's say there is some x which is mapping every occurrence to certain real value and from all these real value uh, we are mapping every, uh, you know, all the values in support of max to another real line. So this f of x also could be seen as a random variable. Uh, so please see that support of x will be larger or equal to support of fx. And uh, as you keep on decreasing the support, uh, there will be information loss. And we have seen the extreme cases that, uh, that uh, all the, you know, occurrences will be mapped to single value. And in terms of probability, uh, you will get ultimately get that. Uh, uh, the probability of that uh, probability mass function will be having a value one at that point and zero otherwise. Uh, but such a thing is not very informative. So as uh, the support of um, uh, support of the random variable keeps on decreasing, there will be information loss, and it could happen that both supports are equal. And in that case, uh, um, if they are equal, we can say that f is invertible. If f is invertible, then there is no in, um, there is no information loss when we say information loss it's a bit vague term what we mean is uh, you know um, in terms of uh, knowing the probabilities uh, we have reduced the reduce our uh, you know space where, where we are working so um, um, we we know less uh, in terms of you know probability values in a reduced domain so let's solve this question that uh, you are given certain discrete random variables uh, x and y uh, has a jo certain joint distribution. So in this particular question, uh, I should write uh, the random variable as a capital letter. Uh, so you can write a many, many, you can ask many, many questions from this joint distribution. So please note that the in the question it is explicitly being provided. It is a joint distribution. Uh, the table could be given in form of many, many distributions. It could be given in terms of marginal. It could be given in terms of uh, conditional. So from the joint distribution, can I obtain the marginal distribution? And please note the sum of the probability in the joint distribution will be one. Sum of probability will be one. Okay, can I write a marginal distribution for y equal to one and y equal to two? So marginal is nothing but you know sum all the elements uh, using the law of total probability, which is uh, this probability, this probability, and this, and that will be the you know uh, y marginal value, uh, mar marginal distribution for y. So I will uh, 
I will directly write for y and z. Okay. So y is one uh, is the same as uh, you know could be written as a law of total probability. X is basically one, two, and three. X is one and y is one. And uh, this will uh, this is nothing but law of total probability. And uh, this sum will come out to be something like uh, seven by twelve. And you can create a marginal distribution for the table for, you know, marginal for y is uh, y equal to 1 and y equal to 2, 7 by 12 and 5 by 12. 5 by 12, please, you can sum it or you can just do 1 minus. So this is marginal you can obtain. Can you obtain the conditional as well? Now when we talk conditioning, conditioning with respect to certain event is the probability of that event. Now, random variable itself is taking multiple values. So I can, let's say if, if I want to write a conditional distribution of, uh, you know, uh, y given x is equal to 1 and y given x is equal to 2 and y given x is equal to 3. Or if I want to write conditional distribution reverse way, x given y equal to, uh, x given uh, y equal to 3. So in this case, let's say if I do the reverse thing, Something like if I want to write probability of x equal to something given y equal to 1 or 2. So let's say for 1 for now. So please note each of this, this conditioning is also an event. y is equal to 1 is event. And for each possible x value is taking. So I am writing, uh, uh, you know, I am talking about, uh, talking about the, so numerator is not one event. Please note, x could take a multiple values and uh, the corresponding events is, uh, you know, x is taking one and y is taking one, x is taking two and y is taking one, x is taking three and y is taking. And uh, uh, if you just apply the formula, you will directly able to note it uh, that uh, this is same as probability of, uh, uh, so for individual element, you can apply the formula for probability of x is equal to 1 given y equal to 1 by the formula only it will be probability of x equal to 1 divided by i'm sorry the numerator will be x is equal to 1 and y equal to, divided by probability of y equal to 1 now uh, you know you can calculate the actual value but the thing to you know note it here differently here is y is taking two different values. So you will get two different conditional distributions corresponding to you know every value of y. Uh, there will be one different uh, conditional distribution. So just to obtain a conditional distribution, uh, the you know shortcut is what you can do. I mean, please don't mug, mug up. But obvious thing, what is happening here is. Uh, take this value and sum it, uh, divide it with some of the, you know, entire, uh, entire row. So I will write the conditional distribution. So probability of, uh, you know, distribution X in something given Y equal to one and distribution X equal to something given Y equal to two. And there will be two different tables for every possible every possible values of y i mean because only there are two values so there will be two different tables so okay uh, this is uh, uh, this in this distribution x is taking uh, value let's say one two and three and the you know the elements are being normalized three by seven one by seven three by seven and here um, again uh, you have to normalize it. So uh, 1 by 4, uh, sorry, 1 by 5, 3 by 5, and 1 by 5. So please note the sum in both the tables will be 1. That is the standard definition of the probability only. And uh, uh, only create, just to create, uh, you know, this example, only thing I want you to note in different from the conditional distribution that we talk, when we do conditioning on certain random variable, what we mean by is we do conditioning for every event that random variable is taking. So y is taking two value one and two. So there will be two different events. And for the both events, I am creating two different conditional distribution. Uh, that's the only thing. These two together uh, could be referred to as a 
as a you know conditional distribution x given y there is no specific event i am specifying but uh, you know in short it could be written as x given y uh, it could be read as uh, for every possible uh, value y is taking consider that as a event and find the you know probability distribution for the random variable x uh so there are three balls uh, which are randomly chosen and the highlight point is these are these balls are chosen without replacement um from a, on uh, containing five red ball and three um three white balls let x denotes the number of red balls chosen find the pmf of x so how to do this let me write this x as a sum of three different random variables so you know x1 is random variable uh, indicating a red ball chosen uh, in first attempt uh, you can see these three balls which are being chosen without replacement as a three you know sequence of the sequence of choosing it from the container or a yarn uh, so similarly this x1 is redefined like this similarly i can define x2 i hope you get it what i mean and similarly i can define x3 x2 is random variable indicating uh, you know red ball is chosen so x1 and x2 can have either 0 and 1 so you know x1 is belonging to either 0 1 similarly x2 is also so uh, basically x1 is 0 means uh, you know at first time uh, white ball is chosen not red if it is you know x2 is 1 it means second time the red ball is chosen now i want you to write a probability mass function for each of these so let's say i want to write a probability uh, x1 or mass function so what what are the possible values x1 can take x1 can take 0 x1 can take uh, 1 and uh, how you can find a probability mass function so you can create a table in terms of sample space and uh, you know uh, r uh, so you can denote it either tuple or a sequence of the you know a sequence of the uh, letters let's say r r r denotes at this is the first time uh, red ball is chosen second time red ball is chosen third time red ball is chosen something like this so how many you know sequences you can get um so you can get a red ball every time or you can get a you know r r w means at the last white ball is chosen r w r all these are different cases please note that white 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 and now let's replace the probabilities and this is very interesting <laughs> because all of them will have a same probability no right because this word without replacement <laughs> so this is the word that has to be you know emphasized it is without replacement so at first time let's say red ball is chosen so that probability is 5 divided by total elements 5 by 8 so second time if red ball is chosen the probability will be you know something else if first time the white ball is chosen then the probability of red selecting is something else um so we'll uh, write a probability for each of the elements and just for your understanding it will not be uniform here uh, so what is rrr so at first time you know at first time uh, red ball is chosen so what will be the probability it will be 5 times 5 by 8 uh, because there are eight number of balls now after first time red ball is chosen so remaining balls are seven and in seven balls uh, you know how many balls are red uh, again uh, five balls are red uh, i'm sorry four balls are red because one is already chosen so it will be four by seven into again uh, a red is chosen but the remaining ball are seven and i, I mean the remaining red ball are three and total balls are six similarly i can write it for each of the term i hope you get it how i calculate this probability three by eight two by eight four by seven one by six uh, so now let's uh, you know find a pmf for x1 so x1 is zero that means what at first occurrences uh, you know no red ball is chosen okay so these were the joint probabilities and how i can actually um, you know calculate the pmf so it is sum of all these value basically so uh, so similarly you can write a pmf of x2 also and pmf of x2 will be you know uh, even more complex so 
PMF of here is uh, second time red is occurring. So, you know, and just sum all these probabilities in the, in terms of joint and, you know, put it. Okay. Uh, so, okay, you get it that, uh, you know, from obtaining the marginal distribution and those things are a bit complex. Um, so, it is, it will not be, you know, uh, it is slightly complex if you go by just uh, creating the marginal probabilities for x1 and x2. So x is, please note that uh, it is a, just a sum of these random variables. And uh, let's say if you have been asked certain question, probability of, let's say, x equal to, you know, uh, x is equal to, let's say, um, 3 given x1 plus x2 equal to 1. Uh, sorry, let's say 2. Um, so again, uh, please, uh, you know, we can segregate this uh, particular equation. So x is nothing but sum of x1, x2 plus x3 equal to 3, x1 plus x2 equal to 2. Okay, you know x1, x2, 2, so replace it, x3 equal to 1. So I wanted to highlight that if you go by this approach, and uh, just find the x3 probability from the probability mass function if you just write uh, x3 equal to 1 here and the probability you will replace you will get a wrong answer and just to highlight this point i have created this example because in this case x3 x1 and x2 are dependent in the variables so from here to here there is a flaw you can't go from here to here and that is a mistake I wanted to highlight. So this probability is not equal to this, but it will become something like this, x1 plus x2. So it will become like this. And that's the nice thing or nice way to solve it. Uh, but still, we don't know how we have how to solve this. Um, so there could be many ways you can solve it. Uh, one thing is to see that after x1 and x2 is 2, uh, you might see that how many balls are remaining in here. So by the understanding of the question, how many remaining balls are there, which is, uh, you know, R6. So the remaining red balls are now not four, but uh, they will be three. And this will be three by six. That means one by two. So similarly, if you have been asked, uh, okay, uh, you can also create using tree structure. First, I can condition on X1 plus X2 occur. And please note that that is also a random variable and that will also partition the entire sample space. Every possible value x1 and x1 plus x2 random variable will take that will partition the entire sample space. And you can talk uh, in terms of tree now. And you know, uh, this edge obviously will be, you know, uh, similarly x1 plus x2 equal to 1. And the nice thing is, um, you know, um, uh, x1 plus x2 equal to 0, x1 plus x2 equal to 1. Now I do the conditioning on another random variable x3. And uh, every, you know, subtree uh, from the from each of the node, the conditional probability distribution is very nicely interpretable. Um, so as we have seen that x3 could either take value 0 and 1. And now we have condition. I'm sorry. Here the here the one is there, and here the two is there. Okay. So so let's say for two, uh, whatever the conditional distribution for x3, I want to create x3 could either take value zero or one. So x1 plus what are the two events? X1 plus x2 is two, and x3 is zero. Here the other event is x1 plus x3 equal to two divided by x3 is one and what is this edge value edge value is a probability of you know x3 is being zero given x1 plus x2 is two and you know these are very nicely and easily we can calculate it what does this mean in first two cases both reds are chosen so what is the probability that the remaining one chosen is white? And as we have seen, even in the calculation, uh, it will be, you know, one by two because white will be three balls 
and none of them are chosen till now and uh, now the six balls are remaining so this is one by two one by two both and uh, you know very nicely we can obtain the conditional probability distribution um, so the thing to highlight in this entire discussion is uh, this distribution probability of x3 this conditional pmf or you know this conditional pmf probability of x3 given x1 plus x2 is easy to obtain uh, you can think uh, you know even this tree will become even more simpler if you have asked something like this uh, probability of uh, x2 is 2 given you know x1 is 1 and here also uh, or let's say you know to be very x2 cannot be 2 i'm sorry x1 plus x2 is 2 given um, x1 is 1 and here also this is not equal to i mean only thing i wanted to emphasize in this equation is just don't replace x1 with 1 and put x2 equal to 1 this is wrong because x2 and x1 are not independent um so this is wrong and you can only write this equal to as a conditional probability only this is fine if you write it x2 is 1 given x1 is 1 and this is also very nicely you can calculate it uh, basically one ball is chosen and that is red and what is the probability that next one is also red and there is a very nice interpretation only seven ball is remaining and you know uh, how many red balls are remaining four so four by seven is nice um, so uh, now i have you know um, for two different variables x and y are independent if for all possible ij um, considering this light uh, you know in the first definition obviously assume this light property that probability of y equal to j is strictly greater than zero so this is same as uh, you know independence of events that we have defined and please observe that the similarity uh, please see everything is event uh, x equal to y is a event y equal to j is a event Okay, so you can similarly replace it given this condition and this is a multiplication form and no assumption of a zero is required in this form and we have discussed this only thing is everything is an event and now uh, earlier when we say that this was an event this was an event okay or wo event independent hogi because multiplication of the uh, probability of the individual event is same that is a standard definition but when we extend it to random variable we have to replace it for all possible values of i and j. Uh, uh, you know, that random variable is taking. So, yeah, I guess I did some typo. Uh, so, uh, please note, this is a standard definition of random variable. So, uh, I have, and I think I have already referred this in our earlier discussion, that uh, conditional uh, PMFs are also there, marginal PMFs are also there. And there is, uh, you know, PMFs of joint distribution also. So, you know, uh, if there are M and N distinct, uh, uh, you know, values, so joint PMF will be in short head, joint PMF will be written as, a, you know, will be written as probability of, you know, X, Y. And uh, how many entries are there in this PMF? Because M is X is taking M different values, Y is taking N different values. So M times N entries will be there and you know the sum of the entries in entire table will be one uh, what about condition you know what about the marginal pmf of x so marginal of x that will be represented by you know p of let's say x and how many values x is taking x is taking m number of values so uh, it will have m entries you know this table will have m entries and uh, there will be another table also you can refer which will have a which will be something like uh, x given y so um, i think a conditional pmf also is there we have already seen this pmf so i'm not redefining now and how many entries in this so please note when we talk about conditional pmf for all possible values of y i know the conditional um, you know conditional distribution or conditional pmf for random variable x so how many values y is taking n and you know x is taking m so how many entries will be there 
it will be there in uh, MN entries, you know, and uh, you can visualize it. Obviously, you might have get, got it. The only difference, uh, you know, MN entries, uh, even in joint probability, MN entries will be there. But, uh, you know, um, uh, in joint probability, um, you know, the sum of uh, probabilities in entire table will be one. And in this particular table, uh, you know, so uh, you can see it is a Y is being conditioned and Y has a how many entries and distinct values. So number of rows is Y uh, N and number of calls will columns will be M. And you know, sum of each rows is, uh, you know, sum of each row is one. That is a conditional distribution. Uh, in very specific, if you want to say this is value, or let's say this is some value i okay so this particular entire this particular entire row represent a conditional distribution of a, you know x given y is taking value y y is taking value i sorry from joint to conditional if you want to go just sum all the entries corresponding to the you know conditioned variable that will be either column or row and divide each entry by that uh, in that row or column so we will end this video here uh, thank you very much for watching this video uh, we will see you in the next video